Sometimes it can take decades to change the public's opinion of a car brand. Take Skoda for instance. Many people who are new car shopping might not even consider a Skoda because of preconceptions they have of the cars from 10 years ago. But the brand has moved on massively. And I'm telling you, if you're in the market for a family SUV in either a five or seven seat configuration and you haven't considered the Skoda Kodiak, then you're missing out. Hi guys, Tish here and welcome back to my channel, Auto Social UK. In today's video, you join me in sunny Spain, where I'm going to be taking a look at the latest generation, second gen Skoda Kodiak. I'll talk you through all of the changes and just tell you why I love this car so much. So if that sounds good, then please keep watching. And if you like new car reviews and car content, then you're in the right place go ahead and hit the subscribe button. So first of all, let's get stuck into all the different configurations you can get of the new Kodiak. At launch, there'll be a simple two trim levels with an SE being available in five or seven seats and the SEL only available in the seven seat configuration. In the SE model, you can opt for a simple loft interior with cloth seats and contrasting green stitching. Upgrading to the lounge interior will cost you around £1,895, but it brightens up the cabin with a mix of grey leather, cloth and Alcantara with contrast yellow stitching. You can also have the SE with either a 1.5 litre petrol mild hybrid with 150 PS or a 2 litre diesel with a matching power output. Standard equipment on the SE includes tri-zone climate control, heated front seats, wireless charging, interior ambient lighting, parking sensors and a rear view camera, and the 13 inch screen and digital dashboard. However, pricey upgrades can include the electronically operated boot, Canton sound system, keyless entry, adaptive cruise control, and heated rear seats. The SEL might tip the scales at over £40,000, but it does get larger alloy wheels, LED matrix headlamps, keyless entry, electronically adjustable driver's seat with memory function, electrically operated boot and a higher quality mixed material interior called Sweet. Switching this out for the cognac leather option that I have in this car I've been filming is also a free choice. It gets the same two options of engines of the SE model. However, you can also have a 2 litre TDI in four wheel drive. This also increases the power output to 193 PS. Sportline will be offered by the middle of 2024 and the hot VRS version will return to the lineup sometime towards the end of the year. So what do you think about the colour? This is the Bronx Gold or it has a few different names which I've heard in some YouTube videos of the one that I filmed in the studio. If you've got a good way of describing this colour let me know what it is in the comments down below but in this Spanish sunshine I think it looks quite spectacular. It's very sparkly, it's beautiful. Whether it will look the same in the rainy English weather I'm not so sure. I've also seen this car finished in blue and red and they're very nice colour combinations. The blue looks exceptionally good on the Sportline trim where you've got some sportier gloss black details. On this version, we've got the chrome surrounding the grille. It still has those iconic crystal headlamps that you get with Skodas and I'm glad that they've kept those. You've got this four eye configuration which Skoda say actually reflects the badge. Maybe that's a little bit of a stretch, but you can get these as adaptive LED headlamps. So they'll be able to bend and twist on the roads and dip the headlamps, which are very good. I've tried these actually on the UK roads and they work fantastically. Maybe a bit of a pricey upgrade, but I think they're worth it. We've got 19 inch alloy wheels finished on this model, but you can get some larger alloy wheels and a few different styles. So you can really add to the personality of this latest generation Kodiak. I also love the fact that we've got some physical air curtains. They just give it a bit more of an aggressive feel. At 4,758mm in length, the all-new Kodiak surpasses its predecessor by 61mm. This is due to it sitting on an updated platform, leading to even more boot space, which I'll show you shortly. 
Rather unusual for a new generation vehicle, width has actually decreased by 18mm, while height is down by 17mm compared to the model it replaces. The most significant mechanical update is the ability to support a large 25.7kWh battery, allowing for an electric-only range of up to 62 miles. This is particularly beneficial for company car tax purposes. But the thing with the Skoda Kodiak is it seems that Skoda have really fought long and hard about their target audience and about who's buying this car. And at every twist and turn that you look around this vehicle, it's got family life at the core. And one of those features is something which has always been featured on Skodas. And that is when you open the door, you have the pop-out door protectors. So these are brilliant if you're in tight car parks to make sure you don't get any dings. Right, now let's check out the interior because it's just as spectacular in here. The interior of this cabin is absolutely stunning. It's very timeless, it feels very classic and I like that. Skoda are sticking to what they're good at and that's using high quality levers and these levers are actually ethically dyed. So they use coffee beans to dye the levers and also olive leaves as well in their other interiors just so they're being a bit more environmentally friendly while still offering good high quality products. I like the way that there's a very simplistic center console in here. It's all tucked behind these little scrollers, which I actually quite like. You've got two wireless charging pads in here and you've also got a little bit of a shelf to pop your mobile phone. Now, I also like the fact that these charging pads are now more powerful and they also have active cooling as well. So it'll make sure that your phone doesn't overheat. In this center console, you've got not one, not two, but if you slide it across, you've actually got up to four cup holders although one of the cup holders is pretty small so I'm not sure what you can fit in it and you also get this little kind of felt lined piece of plastic and uh, you may wonder what that is but because touch screens get very very mucky that is to clean the screen which I really love if you're a bit OCD about fingerprints on your touch screen then this is going to be a go-to for you and it has just the perfect little slot and then you can pop it away so that everything is nice and neat and tidy just like Volkswagen with the center smart dial they've gone one step further with the Skoda so these are smart climate control dials so the left hand side it's now currently on your temperature but if you press it in it changes to your heated and press it again, cooled seats, which is fantastic. And then this middle dial is actually fully customizable. So you can set this smart dial to your favorite quick settings. So for now, it's currently on fan direction, heating of hands, warming of hands, <laughs> volume, and your satellite navigation instant press as well. These are a bit strange. I probably wouldn't have these. I would probably have the fan speed, maybe the fan direction, definitely the volume, and then perhaps I'd have a shortcut to your Apple CarPlay. In the middle of the Kodiak, you'll find a 13 inch screen accompanied by 10 inch digital dials. It offers reasonably smart shortcuts to most important features, meaning that getting to things like turning off the lane assist shouldn't take more than a couple of prods on the screen. Mind you, there could always be more buttons if you ask me. Comparatively, the Tiguan offers a larger screen of up to 15 inches, but in reality, Skoda's screen size is more than adequate. Additionally, for the first time, a head-up display is now available as an optional feature. This dashboard is brilliant. I really like this. You've got this kind of etched design. It looks a little bit like woven, but finished in grey. And then you've got the just the little light bar, which just elegantly contours it. And you've also got this. This feels a bit like an American football to me, but you've got this piece of leather, which is actually a glove box. Look at that. And you've still got the regular glove box down here as well. I just think Skoda have got the interior of this car just so spot on.
When it comes to buyers looking for a spacious and practical SUVs that cater for family needs, driving engagement may not be their top priority. However, the Kodiak still manages to continue to excel in this area, offering a satisfying performance. Sure, it's not going to blow you away, but you can leave that up to the VRS to try and do that. With its refined overall experience, smooth ride quality and a range of capable engines, the Kodiak delivers a high level of competence on the roads. While it may not deliver outright excitement, it certainly ticks the boxes for what buyers in this segment are looking for. The SE base model does not offer the new DCC, Dynamic Chassis Control System, which is available as an option on the SEL and will continue to come as standard on the Sportline trim. The DCC system allows you to switch between seven different driving modes using the central smart dial. These modes include normal, comfort, eco, sport, off-road, snow and individual settings. However, it's worth noting that the two-wheel drive models do not have off-road and snow modes available. The rear of the car is a bit more simplistic. It reminds me a lot of the Skoda Enyaq. There's things that I like and things that I'm not too keen on. Let's start with the things that I like. You've got new rear light signatures, which are connected by a bar. Although this bar is actually not illuminated, just the sides illuminate. And whilst that might feel like a negative, I think it's a positive because lots of car brands are going towards rear light bars. So it stands Skoda apart. I also really like this spoiler. You've got the body colored top and then you've got the gloss black which just contours it i like that and of course you've got a physical rear wiper and i know this isn't a coupe but who knows nowadays with car designers things that i don't like i don't really like this colored rear quarter i don't think it adds anything to the car i think it slightly cheapens it which is a shame i would just do without that or have it finished in gloss black and at the bottom of this bumper which is a bit more robust you do have some contoured false tailpipes, although they're pretty difficult to see on this model. If you go for the sporty Sportline model, they're actually tipped in a colour, so you can see them a lot more, and I just wish they'd move away. They have moved away with the Tiguan, and I just wish they would do away with those. Right, now let's talk about what makes this car truly special, and that is the absolutely ginormous boot space. Now inside this boot, you will find up to 920 litres, absolutely huge. Now we are talking about when the third row is down and the seats are pushed forward. That's when you're getting the maximum amount of space. But if you go for the seven seat configuration and you have them in the upright position, you still get over 300 litres of space. And as you can see, that's more than wide enough to fit a couple of carry-ons. And of course you can stack them up. There is vast amounts of space in this car. They really have gone for that as being their trump card. And I'm so pleased because it makes it incredibly practical for families. They also haven't forgotten about all the things that make Skoda different from other car brands. Underneath the adjustable boot floor, you'll find the space for a spare wheel, as well as somewhere to store your retractable parcel shelf when not in use. There's also plenty of luggage hooks, tethers for a luggage net and levers to release the second row seats. When those are down too, you'll find yourself with a whopping 2,105 litres to play with. Did someone say camping? Rear seat passengers are treated to the same luxury as you get in the front of the cabin as well. It's so lovely in the back here. And if you're wondering, Tish, you don't look like you've got much leg room. That's because these seats are currently slid forward. So if I slide them back and let's do these ones as well, just so you can see a bit better. I've then got a ton of legroom. It's really very spacious. You can also adjust the backrests as well. And then I've got a center armrest where you'll find three cup holders. Although once again, you've got a very little one in the middle. You've got two ISO fix fitments in the back here. Although I would prefer if they were kind of hidden behind zips. I just think that looks a bit nicer and you don't get crumbs in them. These would probably get lots of crumbs kind of down these edges. Very nice seats, but are they the most practical? I'm not too sure. You've got 
pockets on the backs of the seats, but you've also got another little pocket where you can pop your phone, which I think is brilliant. This car's also got the iPad um, holders, which have been added to it. So this is an accessory. And in this center console, you also have this other bit of accessory, which can just slot over the transmission tunnel and it turns into some additional storage. You've got two USB-C charge points back here. And I've also got heated seats in this specification and rear climate. And lastly, what about this third row? Well, it's not the biggest amount of space. I don't think anything will ever blow me away like it did in the Kia EV9 at just how much space there was in the third row, but it'll be fine for smaller people. This is actually slid backwards. So if I slid this seat forward, I would be able to put my legs out straight and I would be nice and comfortable. I've got a really good amount of headroom still though. That's pretty good. In the back here, I have got some cup holders, but unfortunately there's no further amenities. So there's no rear charging capabilities or additional items like that. It's all right if before this video, you wouldn't have considered a Skoda Kodiak because if I didn't do this job, then I definitely wouldn't have considered one either. But I've been hugely impressed with the changes that come with the second generation car. And I now think that this is easily up there with the premium car brands. Audi, BMW, they all need to be aware of Skoda from now on because they're beating them at their own game. But let me know, what do you think of the Skoda Kodiak? Do you like the changes? Is there anything you dislike? Let me know in the comments down below. I really hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, then you know what to do. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Until next time, guys, see you later. Thank <laughs> you.